Well, what's going on is Juice Audio, a channel where I talk about mixing, recording gear, and music production. And today I'm reviewing the Cali Audio WS 6.2 subwoofer. This subwoofer is special in its own regard and I have a lot to say about it. But a quick disclaimer is that this was sent to me from Cali Audio for review, but all thoughts are of my own. So first I wanna talk about what even makes a good subwoofer, just in case you're new to this world and you're in the market for a subwoofer. To sum it up, a sub has to disappear. So what do I mean by disappear? Well, there are many things that factor into that, but just to start, a subwoofer should never audibly draw attention to itself. You should never be able to locate where a sub is placed, and if it's done right, it should sound as the bass is coming from your studio monitors. Distortion, cabin resonances, and chuffing are common things that help you locate where a subwoofer is placed. And of course, integration is a huge part of that, so a good subwoofer should integrate into your system easily with sensitivity and crossover options. It should play with fast transient speed and responsiveness to keep up with your tops and have high dynamic range and a deep frequency response to at least 30 hertz. And you really only need a subwoofer for extension in this case, not to boost the bass in your system. And below 30 hertz is mostly useless. People don't have systems that can reproduce that unless it's a home theater system or a movie theater. And most studio monitors can play clean to about 60 hertz. So you really only need something to add those last few octaves. And the last thing is form factor. In home studios, it has to have the most performance to size because we often don't have a lot of space to give up or money. And all of these things can lead to good or bad translation, which can make or break your mix. Before we get into sound quality, let's take a look at the specs and design, because like I said, integration is a huge part before you buy a subwoofer. This ported subwoofer plays from 31.5 Hz to 180 Hz at plus or minus 3 dB and gets 400 watts RMS from a Class D amp. It has a max SPL of 120 dB and less than 2% distortion at 90 dB. This is all played from dual opposing 6.5 drivers. You might be thinking, dual 6.5 drivers, this basically adds up to a 13 inch subwoofer. But unfortunately, that's not really how it works. Adding another driver allows it to play 6 dB louder and cleans up the frequency response in some ways. So if you add it up, it kind of really adds up to a 10 inch subwoofer, which is still really great because this design of box is unique at this price point. So these opposing drivers really do a special thing. Instead of moving together in the same way, which would actually cancel them out, they oppose each other. This cancels out the inertia that a subwoofer has and stops it from rattling and vibrating in your room. This has a load of benefits to performance, but let's start with how small the form factor is. The box is basically one square foot, which is super small for a sub. They're smaller than the Kali IN8s that I reviewed and loved, and way smaller than my loyal JBL LSR. And don't worry, I got the subwoofer comparison of the year coming up soon. If you want to check out the review of the JBL or the Yamaha, click right here. The box is really heavy for its size, and the MDF is super solid. It has a little resonance when I knock on it, but otherwise it feels very dense. It's front ported by Kali's anti-chuffing port that they use on all of their monitors. It allows air to leave and enter the cabinet at the same rate to prevent chuffing. And of course, you know it works great even when the sub is pushed to a high SPL. It also works to help the speaker hit lower with a clean response. The side firing 6.5 woofers are covered by metal grills, so you don't accidentally poke them with your feet. The grills are very rigid and don't resonate. Looking to the back of the subwoofer, you have an RCA and an XLR quarter inch multi-check, but the quarter inch and the RCA are only for the input and the output is XLR. So you don't need a crossover with the subwoofer as most studio subwoofers are. You plug in your outputs from your audio interface into these inputs, then it's crossed over depending on what you switch, and then it's outputted to your mains. For crossover options, you get the standard 80 Hz, LFE, and external crossover. The LFE option is more if you're using the sub for home theater use. It sounds like it raises the crossover to around 100 Hz to pick up some vocal bass and boost the low end for a little bit more punch. I really wish I had a variable crossover from 40 to 100 Hz to help tune to your room, but I'm probably asking for too much at that point. 80 Hz is always good enough. It also has a volume knob and a polarity flip, but the thing I'm most happy about with this is the foot switch bypass. No other subs in this range has one. This takes the subwoofer out and lets you hear your monitors without the crossover. The foot switch is not included, but you can get one on Amazon for pretty cheap. So before we talk about sound quality, I wanna plug today's sponsor. So today I'm proud to say that this video is sponsored by Bukart Audio, a Danish high-end speaker company who not only makes the best looking speakers I've seen, but also some of the best sounding speakers I've heard for the price. You might be asking, why would I care about hi-fi speakers? I'm here to mix, produce, and master. Well, luckily they have just the model for you. 
The new A10s are a compact full range speaker that not only produce a lifelike sound for casual listening, but with the download of their studio master tuning, change into clinical near field monitors. They play from 28 to 40,000 Hertz at plus or minus one dB and feature the new high-end Purify woofer that plays deep bass with insanely low distortion. The accuracy is razor sharp with fast transients and deep soundstage, all while never being fatiguing due to their new aluminum tweeter. They are a sealed cabinet handmade out of real wood, such as walnut, oak, and ash. So when you're not working on a mix, they have models from compact to tower speakers that look and sound world-class. So if you guys are interested in hearing more about them, click the link down in my description to hear about how they fit into my studio workflow. So when people ask me how this subwoofer sounds, and a lot of people have asked me, I simply just tell them it has a sine wave type bass. That's like the best way I can put this sub into words. And if you don't know, sine bass is the cleanest bass you can have. It doesn't have any distortion or character, and it doesn't have any sausage fattener on it. And just to put my ears into perspective for you guys, I've worked with a lot of studio subwoofers. I've had my JBL LSR for like six, seven years now. I've worked with the Yamaha HS8 for many years and reviewed also on my channel, but I've worked with way more subwoofers and the live audio setting. Some of these subs cost 10K without the amps. So I've definitely heard a few subs and a lot of different scenarios. Because the sub cancels out its net vibration, it doesn't have that kick in the chest that you're used to. But that feeling that you're used to is most likely from the vibration hitting you in your legs or in your body. So I like to compare this sub on how it sounds to a PA system. If you guys have been to any outdoor concerts with line arrays, they often fly subwoofers in the air behind the line arrays, or they put them on the ground, but they often use them together. A flown sub has way more consistency and plays with less peaks, but a ground stack sub really hits you in your chest and you feel it, but it's often at one or two notes. I like to compare this Cali sub to flown subs. It plays extremely clean and you don't notice it at all. To my ears, you just hear clean bass. You don't hear any chuffing. You don't feel any vibration. It's just what you're hearing is pure. And I really thought I had a clean sub until I heard this one. At first, I was not used to it, but switching back and forth, you hear how much the box influences a sub so much. Like going back to my JBL sub, I can hear nothing but the box now. With low distortion and no vibration, this sub fits perfectly into studio use. And I found it to be way more consistent in every room throughout the range. Instead of having a lot of peaks and dips, it's been very consistent for me. And trust me, this sub gets super loud. I've tested it at some super high SPLs, and it really seems like it doesn't want to compress. The bass hits really low and clean, and when I'm mixing, it really just disappears. And the way I hear the sub is that the bass is coming from the center image of my speakers. It feels as if my speakers are playing all this bass. This sub really integrates with any speakers I've thrown at it. But if you're running the setup, I would definitely recommend to go with the IN5s instead of the 8s. I've also been using these with my lovely new Bukar A10s, and it really is the killer system in this room. So as you know, Cali Audio, they don't miss with any of their products. They just don't. They are easily the budget studio monitor kings and give you way more value than what you pay for their products. And out of all the gear I've reviewed from Cali Audio on my channel, this subwoofer by far is my favorite. It's just one of those things that you can't go back from. The quality of the sub and for the price, you just can't beat it. And another thing is that this sub translates amazing. I of course mixed a few songs here and took it in my Tesla, which has an amazing sound system. That's like my new reference that I use for everything. And the bass translated perfect. I just wanna say good job Cali Audio. You guys always innovate and continue to press the market to make it more competitive. And this subwoofer comes in at $500 and by far beats any other sub at this price point with its design, integration, and sound quality. And if you're looking to buy the subwoofer for a different use, I even tested this in my home theater and I watched Oppenheimer for the first time. And I'm not gonna lie, when I was hearing this, I was like, yo, what the heck? This is crazy from a little tiny box. And I was using this in a large room and the bass just straight hit me in the chest. Like, it was amazing. It was really a tactile experience just watching that movie with the sub. So even though it looks small, I would even recommend this for home theater use as well. Well, that's all for today, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed and you guys have a good one.